So I backtrack first to subtracting fractions, and I take a half minus a third. But actually, to subtract these, you need to make a common denominator, and we can actually multiply them together to make that common denominator. So it's going to be 6. If I want to get this first fraction over 6, I'm going to need to multiply top and bottom by 3. If I want to get this one over 6, times top and bottom by 2. Okay, it's 3 over 6 minus 2 over 6, and that equals 1 over 6. It's actually the same kind of process for this algebraic one. I want to get a common denominator so I could multiply top and bottom of the left hand 1 by n, and top and bottom of the right hand 1 by n plus 1. Here goes. I can write down n. I'm going to write it on the left hand side, n plus 1, over n n plus 1, that is this thing here, and then I'm going to minus m, and now this time I'm going to times by n plus 1, so it's going to be n, and I'm multiplying the right hand side by n plus 1, I'm trying to keep the single kind of thing without the bracket on the left hand side. Okay, what next? Well basically, although this looks much more complicated than this one with numbers, what did I do here? I now subtracted the numerators and kept the denominators the same. So I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm not going to expand my bracket quite yet. Okay, there we go. And next, I, I would expand the bracket. So it would be nm plus n minus mn minus m. Expanding that bracket, I need to mi multiply through by minus m for both, divided by n m plus 1, and we're nearly there, we're trying to simplify it, and actually nm is exactly the same as mn, so because there's a minus here, these are going to cancel, my final answer is n minus m over n, n plus 1, that is the simplified fraction. Okay, how can we use that to prove that if m and n are positive integers, and m is less than n, then this is true. Okay, let's start with m less than n. Well I'm gonna I'm, I'm kind of want to use maybe um, this thing on the left hand side is the same as this thing up here so I need to use that somehow and I can write down I can rearrange this maybe I'm gonna do it in steps I can write it um, I can minus m from both sides so I get 0 is less than n minus m and now I'm gonna write that as n minus m is greater than zero. I can just swap that around. So if n minus m is greater than zero, then it must mean now that this thing here is greater than zero because this is also positive. And I've just shown in part A that this thing is exactly equal to that thing. So m plus 1 over n plus 1 minus m over n is greater, over, greater than 0 by part A. I should probably just refer back to it. Okay, what this is saying is that, so I could now pick a value of, I mean, I'm done basically. But I just wanted to add that I could maybe let n equal to 4 and um, let's let m equal to 3. Then it would mean, it would guarantee that 4 over 5 minus 3 over 4 is greater than 0. But like whatever the value of n and m, as long as they're positive, that will always work. So this is just like an, an example, but we've shown that it's true algebraically.